big messaging problem. They were using JMS, and they were using a provider called SonicMQ, and they had fatal issues that were in the waiting queue for more than a year at SonicMQ, and they couldn't get them fixed, and they were paying support, and they could not get these issues fixed. After a year, they were still waiting for help, and SonicMQ simply couldn't fix the issues, in fact. They were unable to say so, but they were unable to fix the issues. They could not fix them. And our job was to come in and make a new protocol, which we, we made AMQP, and we brought in, which I designed, and we made the we made an implementation of that, and we moved their stuff onto AMQP, and it was five times faster, and it worked. And every issue they had, we fixed immediately. It was also open source. But there's, there's no correlation between open source and risk, except down, less risk in general. So what we find, and that's why I say this here, forget dual licensing and support, is not because I don't want that money. It's because any smart customer that comes and uses ZeroMQ very quickly realizes they don't need to pay anyone anything. And why should they? And they don't. It's that simple. They're like, this stuff actually works really well. It works out of the box. It's stable. And when there's a problem, I can diagnose it and I can fix it. I can send them a patch and the patch gets merged onto master right away. I don't need to. The thing is, I don't need to. So I don't need to, and I don't actually build the software. What I do is I help other people build the software. I just help them to organize. Um, I like coding. I code for fun. I have, I have other sources of income if I really want them. If my company had to make money from this, then what I would do is I would sell specialized services. So I would sell training. I would sell support. I would go to an area where people were using